April 29th. This is This Day in Wrestling. I'm Jennifer from Cultaholic and joining me is Ross. It's for our the final last shift time. of this month. Last time this month. God, it's emotional. <laughs> Can't wait for the next month already. <laughs> I've got a lot to learn for next month. So, <laughs> so as we all do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Lots of Japanese wrestling to catch up yes. on. Yes. Too much. <laughs> Too much. Too much. What's happening though? What happened today? 1998. Shall we go back there? Why not? Why not? Heartland Wrestling Association presented the first Brian Pillman Memorial Show. That happened. Hosted that by Steve Austin and Sonny. What a that is a thing that happened. I think it was just a, a glorified house show to raise funds, I guess, for Brian and his family after his untimely death. So it was a good thing that happened. So that's, a, that's a nice way to start. Yeah. Brian Pillman, thoughts? Fantastic character. Yeah. The loose cannon thing that he did in ECW where he worked quite literally one company against another company to get a better contract from one of the companies was genius. Um, so Brian Pillman, yeah. The originator of what Dean Ambrose is now. Oh, say? Dean Ambrose is trying to be. Or Dean yeah, Ambrose evil. is more wacky, whereas Brian Pillman was like certifiably nuts. Mental. Insane. But I, it's a shame he died when he did, because a good old feud, as heartless as that sounds, just being, oh, he died, I didn't get the wrestling I wanted to see. But you know what I mean. Uh, it was a good old feud with uh, Goldust kicking off at the time where he had won the services of Marlena and he did some X rated tapes involving Marlena. Which is quite interesting at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's a character. It, it's just a character that should have gone a lot further than it should have. Uh, obviously, the the gun scene was stone cold mm -hmm. in, in his house. Uh, is something that made the Attitude Era what it was. And if you look at Brian Pillman as a man, apparently he had severe like heart problems and stuff. Oh really? Right from childhood all the way through, he overcame so many odds to get to where he was. So. Just a wonderful man all round. Wonderful man. So the first Brian Pillman Memorial. 2001. Backlash. Backlash, exactly. What happened to Backlash in 2001? The main event was the Brothers of Destruction taking on the power trip of Stone Cold against Triple H. The champions, the tag team champions, the Brothers of Destruction against the world champion, champion. Stone Cold and the Intercontinental Championship uh, champion Triple H. And those bloody dastardly <laughs> heels took it all. There they you go. Uh, left with their Singles Every. championships, and, and they left with Undertaker and Kane's tag team championships. The bastards! There you go. Has that happened like before? Like, I don't again, think so. Since, Adam like Pacini, has it happened? Where someone's held the world and tag, tag team, team and the guys. And everything, like, everyone's had it. I don't think it is. So. No, I can't no. remember it if it has. <gasps> if it has, oh. please tell us in the comments below. No doubt somebody will know. But this is also, of course, the show where Big Show and Shane O'Mac had their last man standing match. V5 fo fum and all that malarkey. Mm, and an ultimate submission match. Yes, well. Kill Angle and Chris Benoit, which Benoit won 4 to 3 in overtime. A nail biter. There you go. They were a good set of matches, weren't they? Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit. Mm -hmm. Wrestling. Solid. 2002 in Raw, the Hardcore Championship was up. And uh, actually, Stephen Richards defeated Bubba Ray for this championship. Sort of a fitting pair of men to be contesting that championship, mm. considering the ECW roots. Yep. Stevie Richards, I'll show you, you'll see. In his pink tights, no doubt, maybe, who knows, uh, defeats Bubba Ray. So, yeah. Thoughts on the Hardcore Championship? I miss it, I do. Yeah. I don't think it will work today, just with all no. the well, sponsors and people yeah. WWE have to keep happy, because some of the things that would happen in the in those matches which just they couldn't happen today. So 2007, another backlash. Backlash. What we've got here. It's the night What's going on? that I think What's ECW, going on? the second ECW, really did die. Oh. Because Vince McMahon won the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. He did. It was a triple threat match, the champion Bobby Lashley against Vince and Shane Vince. and Umaga. But quite faithfully for ECW, Vince McMahon got the pinfall and held the title above with his douche rag on head. That's a, that's a douche yeah, rag. Yeah, I'm sure it is a douche rag, isn't it? Yeah. We're still not figuring this out almost a month later, but there you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Vince McMahon held the ECW title. <sighs> I mean, what do you say? Remember the promo on Roy did where he's just like, I'm going to have to reveal myself. And he did that, and the belt was there instead of his cock and balls. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> that was all I can say. But another match that night um, was Taker Batista. Yes, the Drew. Which was that, yeah. So Taker retained his championship. Just imagine what that was like. A big old bruising match. 
Then the other main Not event, that was for the world title. Uh, yeah. The WWE Championship was a fatal four-way. Oh, where um, John Cena won in a match where there was a lot of intricate things involving all players in the match. There was Cena, Edge, Orton and Shawn Michaels, Michaels. I believe. And they all did things which intertwined quite nicely with each other. It's if you like a wrestling match with that sort of stuff, go and watch that one. So, two, 2011. This is truly one of those, this? you remember where you were moments. Like, yeah, 100%. I was gonna where say JFK like gets shot, Elvis John died. Lennon gets shot, somebody else gets shot, and then yeah, this happens. This was like a proper red carpet event in 2011. WWE Studios release That's Who I Am. <laughs> That's what even who's in it? Ed Harris, Molly Parker, and Amy Madigan. And who else to make it uh, wrestling? Oh, ah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason that's on that bit of paper is because the man you've forgotten. Randy Orton. How could I forget such a sterling role? This is boring. That's why. NFL. Boring. Randy Orton. I've never seen a WWE film. I have. I uh, I was forced to watch the Chaperone back at Name Redacted as a punishment for uh, not winning the predictions competition. And your thoughts? Uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. Out of five? Out of five? Out of five to Ooh. the push. That may be because I was drunk on Star of Promen, my favourite lager. But Lisa Simpson played a teacher. Yeardley Smith and Triple H was the chaperone <laughs> taking care of this little girl against some big baddies. So but, yeah, so that WWE, WWE films. Have you seen it? Like you've not seen any more? Just that, the chaperone. It's just the chaperone. I've not seen any of the Marine. Adam, have you seen any? Or the Commander? See no evil with Kane. Oh. It's actually quite good. <laughs> I actually have that on DVD. I and you not watch it? No! I don't really watch DVDs. I don't like have a DVD player. <laughs> why, why have you got the DVD then? I don't know, at least I got it for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one with Steve Austin in? The Commander, Command, Condemned. The Condemned, yeah. The Condemned. Yeah. Oh, not seen that one either. I'd That's maybe watch that. That sounds Why not? Dark. We should have a, have a night of it. Let's! <laughs> <laughs> DVD night, bring your player. 2011, again, another big year, <laughs> big, big announcement. The Be A Star campaign is launched. Yes, that and is a thing that happens. Yep, they do good, good work. They, I was gonna say, that is good. They ignore it most of the time on their programming, which is <laughs> it's quite funny when you think about it, but Ironic. it's due, it's a good thing for a good cause. Yeah. So. More power to it. I don't know what else you can say about that. No. You, I'd, I'd but really don't, don't be a bully. Yeah, don't be, be an arsehole. Just be a nice person. Absolutely. That's the Geordie version. <laughs> don't be a bully. Be a star. Don't be an arsehole. Be a nice person. <laughs> but I'd really like to go to one of those rallies with Mark Henry. I'd like to see what Mark Henry's like in that situation. You know Delightful, have, I can yeah, only imagine. Just imagine Mark Henry having the necks on the back of your head stand up. Back of the head. There's back a picture of, the neck. of me on the WWE. Or oh, we're gone now, probably, from a house show where Mark Henry's. Right well, yeah, we'll find it and put it in there. <laughs> That's news. There you go. I don't know what day it was on. <laughs> I'll be sure to write it down. I don't know. Though. It might not be there. What's Mark Henry like? Uh, well, he was literally going into the ring. <laughs> like, so he was sweaty. I don't know. <laughs> what did he smell like? Sexual Just... chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and what does sexual chocolate smell like? Mark Henry. <laughs> 2012 Extreme Rules happened, and it was quite eventful. It was. John Cena. Cena and Lesnar. They did big the win for, Big win for Cena. This was a weird time when uh, WWE brought back Brock Lesnar. UFC World Heavyweight Champion, mm -hmm. all the toughest man in the world, and all that malarkey, then he loses to people like John Cena and then Triple H at the following WrestleMania, mm -hmm. which, you know, given the context of the situation, we, he probably shouldn't have been losing to them people. Probably. I know you're a big John Cena fan, but but he's not as hard as Brock Lesnar, and you can't argue it. I would try. <laughs> Go on, then. I would fail, but so I'm not gonna. All right, <laughs> fair enough. But I, this is but yeah, yeah. John yeah, Cena so. beat him. Uh, so that was big. That was big. Building him. Oh, sorry. Knock. It's the thing that Vince McMahon used to have said about when he used to bring people in from WCW or people made elsewhere. He knocks mm -hmm. the gimmick down and he builds but up again. this is exactly what I was going to say there. Like, what do you think that was just all part of the grand plan that they had was to try and lessen him to make him out to be this huge monster beast that we see now? It just seems weird that he would just wouldn't bring him in and just have him beat everybody anyway, like he has been for the past sort of four years now. Do you think that's maybe, think? Cenk Lesnar's maybe holding on to a wee bit of rage about this time? Probably. That's what all the antics now hey, do. If it's, if it's rage he's holding on to about that time and it's working now for him, more power to him. It worked, didn't it, WWE? But, you know, it just seemed weird at the time, didn't it? Well, there you go. What else happened? 
Extreme Rules. Uh, Cody Rhodes. Rhodes big Show. Had a tables match against the Big Show. That happened. <laughs> <laughs> and Sheamus. And Sheamus had a two out of three falls match for the World Heavyweight Championship against Daniel Bryan, of course. In the aftermath of WrestleMania 28, where the kick happened to the face, but Sheamus won again. Uh, 2015, I, 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 an injury to report. It's like I've had an injury this month to report. Oh, no, it's I've it's a bloody done. big injury. It is. Jeff, Jeff Hardy, Hardy broke his leg on a motorbike, dirt bike accident. It's a famous clip on the old YouTube. I think Matt, I'm pretty sure Matt filmed it. And Jeff's going to do a jump, like you do on the bikes, from one mountain of dirt to another one <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't quite go right and he lands and snaps his legs and all hell breaks loose that's that quite injury prone isn't he jeff which is not surprising when you throw your body around like that for 25 30 years <laughs> jesus christ 28 28 it's been, oh god 25 years now jeff hardy it that is be. amazing isn't it, it is amazing and he can still go so yeah well done and my favourite bit, and I know it's probably yours too. Of course it is. It's the birthdays. bit everybody comes for. Yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but birthdays, happy birthday, a huge happy birthday. 41st birthday. 41 is unbelievable for this man. Titus O'Neil. Jesus Christ, he doesn't look a day over 35. It looks amazing. Titus O'Neil, who of course is famous for kissing his son on the mouth in an inappropriate way, considering his mouth teenager or whatever. <laughs> Definitely but, not what he's famous for. Not famous for his tag team championships or his good work outside of the ring in WWE. His charitable causes and all that malarkey. He is famed for kissing his son on the mouth in a way, a way that made people wait it out for a little bit. So He's a family man who loves <laughs> his son and he's probably spending his day with his family being completely appropriate. Necking on with him all day long. <laughs> <laughs> not really Titus. <laughs> We're all... <laughs> Everybody who saw it was a little bit weirded out, but let's not focus on that. He's in, he survived pushing Vince McMahon on the stage and ruining Daniel Bryan's retirement speech. He came through that, he's still got a job, he's got his own little groupies with him now in Dana Brooke and Cruz. Yep. No, not Cruz, no, Apollo. Um, he's dropped Apollo, the Cruz. Oh, he's dropped the Cruz. Sorry, I do beg my pardon. Matthias O'Neill, 41, Happy former birthday. Florida Gator, Happy likes American football. Let him, have, let him have his day. Alright, happy birthday, Tyus. Happy Tyus. birthday, Tyus. <laughs> so that was this day in wrestling and you can follow me on Twitter here. If you like what we do at Cultaholic, you can support us by pledging to our Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.